Why don't we just blurt out what we mean? Why do we beat around the bush uh, and count on our listener to read between the lines? My name is Steven Pinker. I'm a professor of psychology at Harvard University, and I'm a cognitive scientist. I'm interested in how the mind works. I've done research in visual cognition and the psychology of language, and I've written more broadly about language, mind, and human nature. My most recent obsession is violence, uh, an important aspect of human nature. In uh, a book entitled The Better Angels of Our Nature, The Decline of Violence in History and Its Causes, I document the surprising fact, surprising to many people, that violence has been in decline for thousands of years, and we may be living in the most peaceful era in our species' existence. Uh, in it, I document using uh, more than 100 charts and graphs how violence has declined, war, homicide, uh, violence against women, violence against children, uh, torture, uh, debtors' prisons, slavery, all of them have been in decline over different scales of uh, time and magnitude. And then ask the psychologist question, uh, what, are we, what have we been doing right? What has changed? Is it that human nature has changed? I think it's unlikely because many of these declines have unfolded over just the past couple of decades, far too fast for it to be a target of natural selection. Uh, Instead, I believe that there are different components to human nature that push us toward violence and that pull us away from violence. The ones that pull us away from violence are what Abraham Lincoln called the better angels of our nature. Uh, and I try to identify them and to show how changing historical circumstances have increasingly favored our better angels. And so even if we haven't changed, our behavior has. The fact that violence uh, has been so prevalent in human history, but at least quantitatively it shows a decline, suggests to me that, uh, that human nature is a complex system, that it's meaningless to ask, are we basically um, good and cooperative and peaceful, or are we basically warlike and aggressive and violent? That's just the wrong question. We have a variety of impulses that can result in violence. We have a variety of impulses that can inhibit us from violence. Uh, among those that, that can make us violence are just pure, raw exploitation, calculating that if someone is an obstacle on a path uh, toward something we want, we can eliminate that person, resulting in, in rape and plunder and uh, elimination of rivals and conquest. But then there are very different kinds of sources of violence, such as dominance, the desire to climb the pecking order and become alpha male, uh, or the corresponding desire among groups, since we are social animals, for our group to be dominant over groups, whether it be national uh, uh, superiority or racial supremacy or religious supremacy. Then there's an entirely other category of violence that's moralistic, violence that we feel is deserved. If someone uh, commits some sin, we feel it's not only permissible to harm him, but obligatory to harm him. Uh, so on the violent side, there's not a single motive for violence, but a number of them. And then the uh, parts of human nature that pull us back from violence are also um, multiple. There's self-control, the ability to uh, anticipate the consequences of behavior and, and inhibit our violent impulses. There's uh, empathy, the ability to sympathize with someone, to feel their pain. There's a sense of fairness, which is part of the moral sense. And then there's reason, which takes me full circle back to my original interests in human cognition. That is, we do have circuitry in the brain that allows us to engage in rational, objective uh, analysis of uh, our affairs and how we ought to live our lives. I, I like to alternate investigations of, uh, of human nature with more narrowly focused investigations of language. So I'm working on a uh, style manual that, uh, I call it a manual for the 21st century, that will use principles of psycholinguistics and cognitive science and linguistics to give people advice on how to write clearer and more graceful prose based on what we know about how the human mind works, what kind of sentences are easy or hard to understand, what kind of cognitive traps do writers fall into that prevent them from taking the mental state of the reader into account. Then I'm also doing research on uh, a phenomenon that logicians and economists call common knowledge. 
this is the state of knowledge where I know something and you know something, but also I know that you know it, and you know that I know it, and I know that you know that I know it ad infinitum. And uh, linguists have long been interested in common knowledge because it underlies the phenomena of innuendo and euphemism and indirect speech. Why don't we just blurt out what we mean? Why do we beat around the bush uh, and count on our listener to read, be read between the lines, to, to switch the metaphor? Uh, why do I say, uh, if you could pass the salt, that would be awesome, instead of give me the salt? Why do I say, uh, would you like to come up for coffee, instead of would you like to come up for sex? Uh, if somehow, even though any adult knows that coming up for coffee really means coming up for sex, somehow it just feels much more comfortable if the euphemism is used. Uh, why are threats so often uh, veiled? Why are bribes so often veiled? Why, why would we say to a maitre d' uh, in slipping him a, a little bit of extra money, uh, I was wondering if you might have a cancellation, instead of saying, if I give you 20 pounds, will you uh, let me jump the queue and seat me immediately? These are uh, puzzles that are at the intersection of uh, linguistics and social psychology. And I think a crucial component is that when you use innuendo, you may know that you've offered a bribe or a sexual come on, and the person you're talking to might know that you're offering a bribe or a sexual come on. But what you don't know is whether they know that you know that they know that you know that they know, and vice versa. And I think that innuendo uh, prevents uh, shared knowledge from becoming common knowledge, and crucially, it's common knowledge that's necessary for establishing human relationships. Are we friends? Are we lovers? Are we business partners? Are we superior and subordinate? Uh, are we intimates? All of those different kinds of human social relationships are, uh, are uh, agreed upon via common knowledge. If you keep a communication out of common knowledge, you can maintain the relationship that you have. You don't have to switch it over in case the other person doesn't agree to your uh, proposal.